Bones are amazing things. They hold us up. They support us. They make us strong. But bones have other uses. In the past, bones were thrown by diviners, seeking out the mysteries of the future. Now the bones are cubes, made of plastic or resin. But they still reveal things to us. As they fall from our fingers, and rattle across the table, the story becomes clear. Welcome to Bone Thrower's Theater, an RPG actual play podcast. Hello and welcome to Bone Thrower's Theater. My name is Jordan and I'm going to be your parser today. Welcome to the Matrix. Enter query. <laughs> Enter <laughs> character one. Hello, this is Johnny. Enter character two. Hi, I'm Ellie. Enter character three. My name's Aaron. Enter character four. My name's Jeff. Enter character five. And I'm Jeremy. Hello, Johnny, Ellie, Aaron, Jeff, Jeremy. That is a long name, but thank you for choosing. (laughs) We are actually going to be playing a game by a designer that we know and love quite well. Jared Sorensen. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, wait, Aaron, have you ever played Inspectors? No. You never played Inspectors. Sorry, we Jared. To, we need to go back and play Inspectors. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean right now, but <laughs> I love Inspectors. It all, the, the ones that I've listened to have sounded like a ton of fun. They are so much fun. It's right there. I have it right here. Inspectors is a game that I think influences my game design almost as much as Star Wars hmm. in terms of how I GM. So it's very important because Inspectors is all about if the characters succeed on a roll, they narrate the path. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's some timing devices in the game that are very important and everything like that. It's a great one shot. It's great for small campaigns and it's very fun collaborative role play and also really great structure for how to play a game without any planning ahead of time. This game is very structured. Jordan's genius. <laughs> very much influences Jordan's genius. Yeah, well, yeah, no. Uh, Inspectors is almost like the gospel according to Jared Sorensen and how to GM in a lot of ways. And this game has affected me more than anything else. Hmm. More than the entire shelf of books that are over there in terms of how I GM. And I think because we played this so early on, it really yes. But you, I know you have referenced several times. Almost every time you talk about your GMing style, the book Play Dirty. Yes, <laughs> that too. Uh, that's my John Wick. Yeah, and that's another great book. And that also is all about like if your character has yes. a side character that they really love, murder it. Yes, John, John Wick wrote a book called Play Dirty, where you murder things. Yes, <laughs> it's a fantastic primer on how to be a GM. I. Um, one night, I'm like, huh, I'll take a look at the PDF for this book. And I read the entire 200-page book in one evening, and like in a single <laughs> sitting. I'm like, tell me more. Tell me more. <laughs> so, yeah, between Inspectors and Play Dirty, that, that covers a lot of my things. But we're, we're going to be talking about Parsley. Parsley is not a standard role-playing game, and I think that it shows a lot of what a role-playing game can be if you take away things like stats and individual characters. <laughs> In fact, what it tries to do is it tries to emulate the old computer games that you would play on 1980s computers. So, you know, you only have 128K of RAM, you're using a dot matrix printer, you don't have any graphics, so you don't really have too many things. Even sometimes you did have graphics. Yeah, and and they were... Think back to the movie Big. Yeah. 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 They were pretty awkward. So this game is basically, how we're going to play it is that... I am the computer, and I have my software, my uh, my computer program right here in this book. I weigh about 45 pounds, and I'm considered the best technology available for today, rather than you know this computer that can fit into my pocket. Thank you, Steve Jobs. He means Wozniak. Mm, yes. <laughs> well, Steve Jobs. Let's clarify this. So anyway, this game this game is supposed to emulate 1980 style word text video games. So you have like a whole set of prescribed things you can do. For example, like if you want to travel, you would say like go west, go north, go south, go east. 
I'll give you descriptions of like your environments and everything like that and you might be able to interact with some of the things. For example, you might be able to interact with a fishing pole. So you could say, use fishing pole. And I would tell you, you catch a fish. Now that only depends on whether or not I have presented a fishing pole for you. You can't just randomly have a fishing pole for no reason. But like say for example, you want to use the fishing pole, but you don't use the proper phrasing, you might get an error message. I'm sorry, I can't do that, Dave. You know, you also can do <laughs> things like look, examine, search, smell, listen, or taste. Taste fishing pole. Why would you do that? You know, that kind of thing. Or you could interact with things, like you could take something, you could get something, drop, talk, kill, light, wear, or use, so on and so forth. So for example, eat fishing pole. Well, you can't do that. Go fish. You can't go that way. Talk to tree. The tree has no desire to speak to you. Cast to the pole. You don't know that spell. <laughs> It's a little warm up. What we're going to do is everybody is going to get one opportunity to give a command. So it's going to be short. It's going to be sweet. If it gets too complex, well, then your parser is just not going to be able to handle it. Why does this feel like work? <laughs> it's like I'm teaching a coding class. Now. <laughs> yep. No. Yep. So, yeah, and you never thought that uh, you'd play a text-based coding game for your RPG podcast, but here you are. So we're going to go ahead and get started with a light, simple game called Flaming Goat. A subway theater's routine is interrupted by a weird event. Just another day in the big city. You exit the train and find yourself standing all alone on a subway platform. A vending machine is here. There is an up escalator here. Johnny. Examine vending machine. The battered and abused machine appears to be without power. Ellie. <laughs> Go up escalator. The player must walk up the broken escalator. You are standing midway up a broken escalator. A flaming goat blocks your path. Aaron. So I'm halfway up the escalator, and there's a goat there. There is a flaming goat. Examine goat. <laughs> the goat is on fire. It looks angry and hungry. Jeff. Go back down the escalator. Walk back down the escalator. You return to the subway platform. A vending machine is here. There is an up escalator here. <laughs> Go to the vending machine. The battered and abused machine appears to be without power. Power on vending machine. There is no apparent way to power on vending machine. Punch vending machine. <laughs> <laughs> A can of soda drops out of the machine. Get can of soda. You now have one can of warm unopened soda. It's dusted with an acceptable amount of rat and insect droppings. Yum. <laughs> Tastes in the can. <laughs> <laughs> Open soda can. You pop the top of the can. It lets out a pleasant <laughs> Go up escalator. <laughs> the escalator is broken. Now it is just stairs. You are standing midway up a broken escalator. A flaming goat blocks your path. Pour soda on goat. <laughs> yes. The flames are extinguished. The soda can is now empty. Yes. Punch goat. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> There's not a flaming goat. <laughs> a soda can drops from the goat. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a soda can. Oh, oh no! no. <laughs> the goat rushes you. <gasps> Save! <laughs> Is that a thing? Can we save? Yes. Save! You have now saved the game. Alright! Dodge the goat. Query not understood. Jump over the goat. You're a funny man. <laughs> <laughs> Feed the goat the soda can. The goat bites the can and wanders off with it, chewing noisily. Continue upstairs. You are standing at the top of a broken escalator. You may now resume your daily commute. What was up with that goat, eh? <laughs> the end. <laughs> Congratulations, you have scored 1,000 points. Hooray! <laughs> and that's how the game works. <laughs> I like that, that's fun. So, now I'm going to... So before we continue, yes. 
You knew what to do, so he's a semifinal, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Wait, so now my question is, is the point of what we are trying to do here to beat this game? Yes. yes. Or is the point of what we are trying to do here to have fun and create humorous situations? I'm sorry, I kept punching things. Well, that was great. I love it. <laughs> well, as soon as there was a vending machine, I knew there were... Because oh. the, the other option would you, be to drink the soda can and pee on the goat. You can win in, <laughs> in loose. There's, oh, no. Well, I mean, that depends on whether or not the information was entered into the parser. Correct. Well, you can well, win. we're going to have fun regardless. Okay. You can win. You can lose. Our goal is to win. You're, the goal How is to we get win. there is a death of question. Yeah. Okay. So, and it also depends on the tone of the game that you want to play. Because okay. we do have several different options here. There's Action Castle, which is the very first Parsley game. Action Castle 2, the sequel. And then Action Castle, Castle 3, 3, to roll out the trilogy. <laughs> then there's also Blackboard Jungle. Mm-hmm. And Blackboard Jungle is a, it looks like a school parody. Can you find your homework and avoid detention? Or are you doomed to a weekend of staring at the wall? So that sounds like Jeremy's life. <laughs> <laughs> then there's Danger Town Beatdown. It's 1987, and Detective Jack Slade and his partner Jetta Chang must take down a crime boss and restore law and order. There's Jungle Adventure. And I've played Jungle Adventure before. That's, that one's a lot of fun. And then Pumpkin Town, which looks kind of cute. And then there's Six Gun Showdown, which is kind of a Western themed one. Space Station, Spooky Manor, and Z Ward. Zombies in a hospital. I say Six Gun Showdown, Space Station, the Jungle. Jungle Adventure? Yeah. Those are my three choices. Jungle. I'm down for Six Gun Shootout or Space Station. I'd be down for Jungle. I want Space Station. So Space Station seems to have three votes so far. So does Jungle. Yeah, yeah I was going to Space Station or Jungle. <laughs> well, so um, Space Station is- or Jungle? Spungle. Spungle. <laughs> Just flip back and forth between the two. <laughs> so Terra <Proximus? laughs> So actually, does anybody have a coin? One of those ancient things. All right. We're going to sell all this old-fashioned way. Heads, jungle, tails, spaceship. Heads. Jungle, jungle. it is. Jumanji. Jungle Adventure! Or, 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 or. After surviving a crash landing in the jungle, a daring archaeologist sets out to retrieve a legendary oh. treasure. All right, archaeologist, are you ready? Why? All right, Steve. Crashed plane. You wake up to find yourself buckled into the pilot's chair of a single engine prop plane. Through the cockpit window, you can see the deep jungle. There is a backpack here. John. Examine backpack. It contains a lighter and a compass. Exit plane. You're still buckled into your seat. (laughs) (laughs) Unbuckle seat. You are now unbuckled. Collect backpack. Inventory. One backpack containing lighter and compass. Use compass. The brass compass points towards the north. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Search plane. There is a backpack that you've already picked up. Walk north. (laughs) You're still in the plane. (laughs) (laughs) Exit plane. You have exited the plane. I hate you. (laughs) You stand in a clearing, the site of a terrible plane crash. The crash site is surrounded by smoking wreckage in inhospitable jungle. Listen for water. You don't know that, band. Inspect wreckage. The plane is beyond repair, but you may be able to salvage some supplies from the wreckage. Salvage supplies. You find a rifle. Yes. God, what do I get? I'm gonna like a cur now. What <laughs> plane is this? One that doesn't like me. And you can always, as a reminder, you can always ask what your inventory is. Yes. I would like to walk north. How? 
in that instance, your command was too long. Okay. Because it's like supposed to be like walk north. Okay. Yeah. Walk north. You are lost in the deep jungle. Examine the rifle. The rifle is in good condition, but it's not loaded. You find no ammunition in the wreckage. We have a cool looking club now. <laughs> Check compass. Mmm. The compass points to the north. Inspect lighter. The silver lighter is engraved with the words from your colleagues at the university. You give it a shake. It's full of lighter fluid. Go south. I hope it's back in the wreckage. <clears throat> you are lost in the deep jungle. <sighs> Check pockets? You have a lot of lint in your pockets. <laughs> <laughs> Yum. That'll be my meal for tonight. Go west. You are lost in the deep jungle. Go east. <laughs> you are lost in the deep jungle. <laughs> Can we discuss? Oh, sure. Okay. So, have we used the compass or have we examined compass? I said use compass. Okay, you, say you are compass. using the compass. Okay. Yes. But right. you're, you're heading directions that do not lead anywhere. Okay. So, do we have to remember our steps? Like, sometimes. Because I've already gone north, south, west, east. Contiguous path. So theoretically, we should be back at the. Theoretically, but we're we're lost. Yes. But so there, there it is an eight point compass, or yes. there could be. You know, if we look, there might be a path. <laughs> I mean, we would likely not because I think that we would get that in the. You are lost in the deep jungle. Yeah. But there are still four more directions we can go. I, oh, likely. Yes. So we don't have to go just those four cards. Correct. Right. Oh, okay. Go. All right. Go northeast. All right. You are lost in the deep. <laughs> 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 go south. Yeah. 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 Go southwest. Southwest. Ah. You were lost. <laughs> <laughs> you are lost in the deep jungle. <laughs> Climb tree. <laughs> there are lots of trees. Which one? Climb tree on left. <laughs> You are climbing tree. Like higher vantage point? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. Look! <laughs> Where? <laughs> Look north. You see lots of jungle. <laughs> <laughs> Look south. More jungle. Look northwest. How much jungle do you want to find? <laughs> <laughs> There's only one more direction. That's southeast. Hear me out. We have lighter fluid, and we have stuff to burn. (laughs) 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 The only thing coming to mind is Lake Tree, but... (laughs) This thing enchanted tree. Examine tree. (laughs) Love, 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 love. This tree is tall and leafy. There are small creatures skittering around its branches. Go southeast. You find yourself at a clearing. Yay! <laughs> the last <laughs> one. <laughs> if you head north, it looks like more deep jungle. If you head south, there might be habitation. There seems to be something to the east where the trees might disappear. But there's always more trees to the west. Go east. You stand on the western edge of a vast deep gorge. There's an old rope bridge here. A trail leads south. Cross bridge should go south. Inspect rope bridge. The bridge looks quite old and creaks in the wind. <laughs> I wouldn't trust it. <laughs> I'm glad Aaron didn't get the last bit of information. We would have died. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't say. Oh no. <laughs> All I'm thinking right now, I'm thinking safe. Safe. <laughs> Follow path. You've arrived at the cool pool. It's surrounded on all sides by swaying palm trees. Drink water. <laughs> safe, safe. <laughs> Die of dysentery. <laughs> As you go into the pool to drink the water, you feel something slither across your leg. Before you can react, a water snake bites into your ankle. You feel dizzy and sick, and the poison spreads. You slip into unconsciousness. The end. I knew it! He killed us. Oh, 
<laughs> well, I guess we got to restart at the beginning. Because we never saved. Do you want to start back at the beginning? We, we should have saved me. before you went into the water. <laughs> we should have saved, like, at some point. <laughs> but see, we only get three saves. Oh, oh that's yes. true. Well, yeah. well, we definitely should have saved before we went into the water. That was Obviously. definitely one of them. Well, Today. so now we start at the beginning. We're in the plane. All right, we are at the beginning. <laughs> Crash plane. You wake up to find yourself buckled into the pilot's chair of a single engine flat plane. Through the cockpit window, you can see the deep jungle. There is a backpack here. Unbuckle seat. All right, you may now leave the plane. Bing. Collect backpack. You have a backpack. Exit plane. You stand in a clearing, the site of a terrible plane crash. The crash site is surrounded by smoking wreckage, an inhospitable jungle. Examine crash site. The plane is beyond repair, but you may be able to salvage some supplies from the wreckage. Salvage supplies, sorry. <laughs> supplies! Supplies! <laughs> you find a rifle. Go southeast. You are lost in the deep jungle. We need to take the compass. <sighs> Never did look in the backpack. Check backpack. It contains a lighter and a compass. Go southeast. You are lost in the deep jungle. Examine compass. The brass compass points towards the north. Go southeast. You are lost in the deep jungle. I almost wonder if we have to go all eight directions. Go east. You are lost in the jungle. You've examined the compass. We haven't used it. Use compass. You can now use the compass for navigational purposes. <laughs> it is pointing north. Go southeast. You find yourself in a clearing. To the north seems to be more jungle. To the south, there might be a sign of habitation. To the east, well, that the tree line stops. To the west, there are more trees. Should I save here? At the crossroads? We know how to get back here pretty quickly. Yes, but if I go south of the village, we don't know what they're going to do to us. I mean, we're a pretty good guess. We're in a jungle. They're going to eat us. <laughs> That's what people do in jungles. <laughs> That's just what they do, man. Or they turn you into a golden god. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> or toss you into a volcano. I mean, they, they kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Go south. <laughs> you enter a village. There's a cooking fire here. There are three huts here. A path leads west. And the deep jungle is to the north. Save. 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 Game saved. I'm not making that mistake again, you guys. Saves at the village. Search huts. You see the witch doctor's hut, the woman's hut, and the warrior's hut. Huh. Talk with witch doctor. What witch doctor? You don't see a witch doctor. You just see the hut. Go to witch doctor's hut. You are standing in front of the witch doctor's hut. Enter witch doctor's hut. You enter the witch doctor's hut. The village witch doctor is here. Talk to witch doctor. Witch doctor. Ha 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 ha. I was waiting for it so much. <laughs> you see an ancient man. He wears a necklace made from bones and feathers. The witch doctor glares at you. Examine hut. You see the witch doctor's hut. Use lighter. You can see the witch doctor very well. <laughs> <laughs> he wears a necklace made from bones and feathers. He glares at you. I really, really want to. <laughs> Do it! Do it! Witch doctor. Set hut on fire. <laughs> really? <laughs> How many reloads do we get? I only know we only get three saves. How many times do we reload to that save point? <laughs> I think we get as many as we need. <laughs> <laughs> the hut catches on fire. The witch doctor begins chanting. You are overwhelmed by a swarm of fire ants that pour out of the jungle. Wow. Your flesh is consumed by the voracious insects, and all that's left are your bones. Sweet. The end. He's got a new necklace. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to this episode of Bone Throws Theater. Hopefully this archaeologist is not so hapless in the future. We'll find out what happens next time. 
Thank you for listening to Bone Thrower's Theater. Our cast is Aaron, Ellie, Jeff, Jeremy, Johnny, and Jordan. We are releasing this podcast under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 3.0 unported license. That means you can share the podcast, but please do not modify it or try to gain financially from it. If you would like to visit our website, you can do so at bonethrowerstheater.com. If you'd like to send us an email, you can do so at bonethrowerstheater at gmail.com. Our Twitter handle is bonethrowerstheater. You can also look us up on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And until next time, may the bones fall ever in your favor. This has been a Nerd Circle podcast production.